When I first laid eyes on a 2.4 liter turbo motor in a PT Cruiser, <clears throat> it was daunting, it was intimidating. Um, I had been used to naturally aspirated versions of the motor up until that point. So this was my first exposure to actual hands-on, eyes-on of the turbo motor. And what was daunting is the number of lines and hoses and uh, things that are basically all around the motor but particularly on the back side and that's where you know it got the most daunting for me as I was disassembling it because I wasn't sure what exactly every line was and I like to know I like to really understand how it works why it works and what goes where so it was unfamiliar territory and now that I've had a chance to work on it a lot I wanted to share hopefully something helpful in case you're curious, interested, working on a turbo motor yourself, um, and you also, you know, find just the, the sheer number of uh, lines and hoses and um, things like that confusing, or you would just like to know maybe, you know, hey, what is this thing up here on top that connects to the turbo or the intake manifold? Where does that go behind the motor and vice versa? So hopefully that's what um, I can help shed some light on in this video, is just what each line is and where it goes. Um, I hope it helps. Uh, thanks for watching. So let's see if we can break it down a bit. Okay, so here, up here, is the turbocharger. I have removed the uh, blow-off valve, the stock one, and I'm going to be putting on an aftermarket blow-off valve that'll connect to the uh, intercooler hose, but we'll talk about that later. So, from the, the turbocharger, um, let's see, first you have this big, oh, I'm sorry, first you have this big intercooler um, hose. This is the, the hot air coming off that turbocharger going down to the intercooler to get cooled and then um, come back up around and go into the throttle body. Um, but let's see, there's all this stuff back here, right? So what's going on? Um, you'll see some of these braided, uh, lines, braided steel lines that I installed. These are swapping out the factory ones, which are just metal lines. Um, these, uh, supposedly have, you know, great insulation, um, their flexibility and bendability just... Supposedly, you know, easier for uh, installation and, you know, working your hands around if you've got to get in places and, you know, the braided steel can move around a little bit than, you know, more than just a solid steel line. So I decided to go with those. And there's another one back here for the um, oil, uh, which goes up to the turbocharger. So let's see what we got um, going to and from the turbocharger. So this line right here is coolant um, and that goes from the turbocharger down into the block okay um, I'm getting my uh, flow and return confused so off the top of my head I can't remember if that is going to or from the turbocharger uh, I think it's going to yeah this is coming out of the block going up into the turbocharger um, I believe with what is considered the cool um, cool uh, the cool antifreeze okay um, this oil line back here the smaller rate steel that is also delivering oil to the turbocharger for lubrication and for um, cooling and I'm trying to get a, a focus on where I have that connected to the block um, let's see if you can see it you can kind of see it back there maybe but to the left of this there it is 
there is that oil line that goes up to the turbocharger. Okay, that fitting there. Um, those, so we've got the oil and the antifreeze. Those are the oil and antifreeze going to the turbocharger. So coming out of the turbocharger from, we have this oil return line here, and that drops down. You got a little heat uh, heat wrap here that goes into the block, into the the oil pan. Okay. Um, the coolant uh, flow out of the turbocharger, the return coolant flow, will have to go up top. Okay. This one right here, <clears throat> the larger of these two braided lines, that comes around. And again, I replaced the factory lines with these braided steel. That goes connects to a rubber hose, flows into one of your heater core uh, lines, okay? And that goes into the firewall to the heater core. So um, I believe that is, you know, given more hot antifreeze so that you can have uh, a nice heater uh, going on, on the inside. So that is the flow out of the turbocharger with hot antifreeze. Uh, and by the way, this was that oil line while we're up here. The one that I pointed out, the smaller braided steel that was uh, coming up, that comes up, goes into the top of the um, turbocharger. That is oil from the, the block pumping into the turbocharger. Um, let's see. And you can see, just to point out the, the coolant lines, where this turbocharger coolant line connects is right where you have these metal lines that go over to um, there's your water pump behind behind there there's the back of the water pump or where uh, yeah where the blades are is right there and there's the the coolant fitting the hose right there okay and your lower this blue hose is the lower radiator hose Okay, so that's um, the oil and antifreeze flowing to and from the turbocharger. Uh, what's going on right here, okay? And this is your um, oil filter mount. Here's my oil filter. And this is the, the factory turbo oil filter mount. And this, this finned part of it, is actually a cooler to cool the oil okay that's factory so it needs to have antifreeze coolant uh, flowing in and out to cool it and that's what these um, this hose here that goes into it that is flow uh, from right the lower one is from this cooler it goes up you'll see this black metal line here that goes up. You can see it bending back there. It goes across the, the top um, right there. And that connects to the heater uh, hose coming out of the heater core flowing, uh, flowing out. And that would go back um, Let's see, that would go go to get cooled off in the radiator uh, following the flow of it. Um, okay, so there's that line. Then the, the top line, which is kind of buried in here, sorry, but it's this fitting right there. That one is this silver metal line that bends around right here and goes into the block. This is coolant from the block coming down into your oil cooler, okay? Um, so 
there's already a factory way that it's trying to cool the oil, but I wanted to cool it even more um, just because heat is um, a big issue, right? So I added on this adapter uh, from Summit Racing. You can get them in, in other places, but this screws on to your cooler, just like your filter would uh, essentially, it's, it's an adapter. So the filter still screws on as normal, but you have this plate now in between. And what it has is two fittings of oil flowing uh, in and out of that adapter plate. So I've connected those hoses and using an extra set of um, brackets off of the power steering uh, hose setup, what I was able to do is run these hoses behind the intercooler. If you can see there, I have them um, held in with a, a metal a metal bracket that was from the power steering setup and I bolted that see there it is the this bracket right here I bolted that to the transmission housing because there was a, um, a bolt hole right there that was very fortunate so that's able to hold those hoses in place from touching a hot intercooler hose or from touching this um, uh, inter intermediary shaft which is going to go out to the CV axle on the passenger side but this is stationary it doesn't wiggle or go up and down with suspension it is bolted in place so though we have literally like millimeters between uh, these coolant hoses and the intermediary shaft they should not touch they, sh they should be okay all right so those um, oil lines come down underneath here's the the power steering lines and their normal brackets right here which also hold this intercooler line well I was able to take um, because I had another set of the the power steering lines I took the bracket off of it because it just clamps on like this and you just uh, bend those little tabs to hold it. So I used an extra set to hold the oil lines, okay? And those oil lines follow the power steering ones right up to the front. And I have to finish installing those and actually uh, connect them to the oil cooler that I'm gonna have in front of the radiator. Um, but that's it, that's all that's going on Thank you for watching PT Bubbles. Um, I hope the video was helpful and stay tuned for many more. You can subscribe to my channel and there's all sorts of stuff going on with upgrading this PT Cruiser and I'll be adding other videos uh, of some other work on PT Cruisers and soon some other vehicles. Um, I will also have another video uh, to go over all of the lines on the top of the motor that are like vacuum hoses and lines for the turbocharger, which is another big difference between the naturally aspirated and the turbo motor, um, and another daunting element um, to many folks from what I've seen. So I'll post that video soon and hopefully it can help give some um, clarity and comfort in knowing what goes where and what does what. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, see you soon.